In today's Tech Builder Review episode, we're going to do an unboxing and review on one of the most affordable gaming laptops that you can buy this Christmas of 2020. It's loaded with features including two M2 SSD slots, an extra HDD slot, and a dual fan quad vent cooling system. This is the Mac Nike T58, a well-balanced and fully loaded gaming laptop priced at 35,000 pesos or 700 US dollars. It comes in different variants, but here are the specs of the one that I will be doing a review on. I'm also providing a coupon discount link down in the video description. Now let's move on to the unboxing. The laptop comes in a densely packed cardboard box. Inside this tub is a low profile 120 watt charger adapter. It's quite slim for a gaming laptop charger. I like it. Now let's remove the foam and grab the laptop. Inside the plastic comes the manual and a bunch of M2 screws for SSD upgrades. Upon unveiling the screen, ooh, those are really slim bezels. The laptop is made from really sturdy plastic. The ports are fully loaded. You get a left cooling vent, a USB 3.2 port, USB 2 port, a mic input, and a headset output. The sound card is also strong enough for studio headsets. On the right is another cooling vent, an SD card reader, which is really handy since I work with a camera often, a USB-C port, and another USB 3.2 port. But that's not all. From the back you have some really rugged hinges, two rear exhaust vents, and a bunch of ports as well. There's also a mini display port, an HDMI port, an Ethernet port, and the charging port. I do believe you can run a dual monitor setup on this thing, although I've only tested it with my 144Hz 2K curved Xiaomi monitor display. Before I built my Ryzen 9 workstation, I used to dock my laptop on a monitor. And I couldn't stress out more on how nice the hinges are. Now let's take a look under the hood. The laptop has a detachable 41 watt hour battery pack. It's not that big, neither is it small, but it should do. Okay, I'm liking it so far. You get two RAM slots upgradable up to 32 gigs. Mine comes 16 gig in stock, although I'm not quite sure why they're not uniform. You also get a 512GB M2 SSD storage and an extra M2 slot for another SSD upgrade. There's also a blank slot for an HDD making this a triple storage laptop. On the right is a dedicated cooling fan and heatsink for the GPU and a dedicated fan and heatsink for the CPU on the left. Each fan has two vents, one from the side and one from the rear. It's a well-designed cooling system. And here's a look on the copper block and the four heat pipes. The laptop also has a cooling customization software with a cooling curve graph for controlling the CPU and GPU coolers. The silent mode is really silent. You can play games on the silent mode, but setting it to maximum prevents the laptop from thermal throttling, squeezing out every juice that your laptop can provide. The customizable RGB keyboard is one of the nice things about this laptop. While you can't create sequential patterns for it, you can set the colors as a whole or select the color changing mode on the keyboard using the Mac Knight control panel. It's a really nice full-size chiclet keyboard. Keyboard flex isn't a problem when reasonable pressure is applied, unless you press it real hard. The touchpad on the other hand is nothing special, but it's decent. It does the job. The buttons on the other hand is a bit mushy halfway through. Time for a gaming test. The first game that I've tried is one of the all-time classics, Red Dead Redemption 2. At medium settings, you'll get around 35 to 40 FPS. With the i5 processor running at 50%, the majority of the bottleneck comes from the GPU. Setting the game to low would give you frame rates at around 55 to 90 FPS. It really depends on the scene on this game since it has a really big map. Running older classics like Need for Speed Shift at max settings would give you an average of 100 FPS with the GPU only at 80%. The batteries on this thing would last you around 2-3 to three hours of usage. And for my favorite gaming test, the poorly optimized player known Battlegrounds runs really well. At Ultra, you'll get an average of 40 FPS, but if you want to stay competitive, you'll have to use medium or low settings to get frame rates above 60 FPS. It's really sad how this started to become a dead game. For a more competitive first-person shooter game, CSGO would give an average of 90 FPS with the game set to the highest settings. Just take note that the laptop has a 60Hz screen so going above 60 FPS would barely matter. Sadly, the MSI Afterburner stat bar wouldn't show up on this game so just use the Steam FPS counter on the upper right as reference. <laughs> 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 
Rise of the Tomb Raider, on the other hand, can be played at max settings with an average of 50 FPS. If you like to get a stable 60 FPS or above, you'll have to use the medium settings. You gotta love the graphics on this game. And finally, GTA 5 at max settings would play an average of 50 FPS. You can set it to high settings for higher frame rates going above 60 FPS. If you want more benchmarks, just search for GTX 1650 benchmark videos to get the results that you're looking for. Regardless whether you're using Sony Vegas or Adobe Premiere, the laptop handles 4K video editing from my Sony a7 III camera clips really well. The 10th Gen i5 processor is a tad faster than the older 8th or 7th Gen i7 processors. Adobe Photoshop works well too as the IPS panel has a balanced color output. Here's an audio test for its speakers. I'll be honest, it's one of the very few bad things I could find on this laptop as it sounds a bit tinny and it isn't that loud. Watching movies on this thing is quite enjoyable. The 15.6 IPS LCD display has thin side and top bezels. The viewing angle is quite fair and the LCD is quite bright. Colors are good and balanced for an IPS display. Like most gaming laptops, the battery would only last you 4 hours on medium brightness while watching movies. Now, let's talk about the webcam. Here's a sample footage from the laptop's webcam. It's running on a 720p webcam with stereo microphone configuration. The viewing angle is just right, and uh, you know what to expect from a laptop webcam. It's nothing compared to your phone, but if you're planning to use this for online classes, online conferences, or if you're planning to stream on the go, the webcam on this thing is pretty decent. When I got this laptop, it came with some freebies. I got this minimalist backpack with a handy external USB extender port for a power bank. I also got a free Mac Knight gaming mouse, a mouse pad, and a universal adapter. So let's wrap up. Overall, the Mac Knight T58 gaming laptop is a great bang for the buck. The build quality is good and it's equipped with powerful and up-to-date entry-level gaming laptop specs that would let you play any game up-to-date. Whether you're planning to use this for editing, gaming, or 3D modeling, it's an affordable workhorse that I can recommend. I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching.